came out and once we understand what pain is, and I actually do a seminar on pain where I talk about what pain is, and how pain is, you know, the three purpose of pain and what pain does. Once we understand the message, we don't need the pain. So all these people who go through life with all this pain, carrying it with them, you don't need it. Once you understand what it's there for, you can get rid of it. Now, I'm not saying you get rid of pain in your leg and then go for a marathon run. You know, we've got to use some wisdom. I had that happen once. There was a man that I was working with who had gout in his legs. And so I did a technique with him, got rid of the pain in his leg. He was lying down on the sofa bed. And then he felt so good, he stood up and walked around. He said, but my feet are numb. I said, do you want to get rid of the numbness? I'd never worked with numbness before. I thought, let's give it a go. I did another technique, got rid of the numbness. So suddenly he got feeling back. He's wiggling his toes. It's all good. His daughter comes in. He gives her a piggyback ride. First time he'd given his daughter a piggyback. She was about six years old. First time he'd ever given her a piggyback ride. Just because he's been sick. He was an islander. With gout. Severe gout. Couldn't work. So anyway, after I left, I didn't say be careful, use wisdom, don't overdo it. He went for a two or four kilometre walk. So the next day he went back and saw the doctor and he was in worse pain than when he started. Okay, so we've got to be careful. We use wisdom in these things. Once we get the message of pain, we cut the pain off, don't then go for a marathon run. So that's what I tell people now. So I've learned these things over time, is that we can disappear pain, but we're going to use wisdom. Okay, we've got to make sure that our body can support us.
last couple of years? Yes. There is a picture in Anthony Robbins' book, Bill yes. Robbins' books, of a lady. And when you look at it, how you first perceive it is how your mind is working or something. Like that. It's a very clear picture in that book, anyway. And you could easily depict it as either an elderly woman or a young lady. Well, yes, the other, yes. It's incredible. Oh, so who's seen the picture? Yeah, I've seen the picture. Yeah, and so our perception, mm -hmm. once that changes, then life can change. And so once we think about and once we understand what pain is, and I actually do a seminar on pain where I talk about what pain is, and how pain is, you know, the street purpose of pain and what pain does. Once we understand the message, we don't need the pain. So all these people that go through life with all this pain, carrying it with them, you don't need it. Once you understand what it's there for, you can get rid of it. Now, I'm not saying you get rid of pain in your leg and then go for a marathon run. You know, we've got to use some wisdom. I had that happen once. There was a man that I was working with who had gout in his legs. And so I did a technique with him, got rid of the pain in his leg. He was lying down on the sofa bed. And then he felt so good, he stood up and walked around. He said, but my feet are numb. I said, do you want to get rid of the numbness? I'd never worked with numbness before. I thought, let's give it a go. I did another technique, got rid of the numbness. So suddenly he got feeling back. He's wiggling his toes. It's all good. His daughter comes in. He gives her a piggyback ride. First time he'd given his daughter a piggyback. She was about six years old. First time he'd ever given her a piggyback ride. Just because he's been sick. He was an islander. With gout. Severe gout. Couldn't work. So anyway, after I left, I didn't say be careful, use wisdom, don't overdo it. He went for a two or four kilometer walk. So the next day he went back and saw the doctor and he was in worse pain than when he started. Okay, so we've got to be careful, we use wisdom in these things. Once we get the message of pain, we cut the pain off, don't then go for a marathon run. So that's what I tell people now. So I've learned these things over time, is that we can disappear pain, but we're going to use wisdom. Okay, we've got to make sure that our body can support us in this new way. Otherwise, the pain will come back tenfold. Who else we got? Um, my name is Pam. I'm a community disability worker. Right. Um, and pretty much what Stacey said, just here, just to find out a little bit more about what you're doing, what you're going to address. That's it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, welcome here tonight. As we get started, I'm going to first of all talk to you about. A man by the name of Matsui Oyama. Matsui Oyama lived in Japan many years ago. And as a young man, he decided that he would push his body to the limit to find out what he was capable of. Has anybody here heard of Kyokushin Kai Karate? Yeah. Kyokushin Karate. <coughs> so Matsui Oyama decided after training as a young boy and learning all these different skills about karate, he decided to go into a mountaintop. And he spent three years on a mountaintop training and meditating. He would go into waterfalls, freezing cold waterfalls, and train his body and his mind and his spirit. And he was looking for, searching for the ultimate truth, to find out exactly what the body was capable of. He would train eight to ten hours every day, pushing his body to the limit, pushing his body to the maximum. He would use a knife hand strike, if any of you know karate, the actual karate chop, they would use this little bone right here. He would actually cut rocks in half using the knife hand strike. So he did all this training on the mountain. After he returned from this mountaintop, he said that his life was different. It was changed forever. It's rumored then that he did a tour of the USA and he fought 270 fights. Not only did he win every fight, but not one of those lasted for longer than 30 seconds. He even took on a number of bulls. He did bullfighting. He fought 52 bulls in his lifetime, two of which he killed with a single blow. So he received the name the God Hand because of his power and strength. Now, what he would do with these bulls is he'd sidestep, he'd chop their horns off with a knife hand strike to the head. He actually chopped the horns off. So it was quite brutal by today's standard. They should do, don't, don't do bullfighting like that today. But it just goes to show what the body was capable of and how he was training his mind and his body to do these marvellous things. Now, he wrote a book then called This Is Karate and it was released in 1971. It was, it was a bestseller and he sold millions of copies worldwide. And Kyoka Shinkai 
was a, the karate style that I was invited to at the age of 12. A friend of mine said, hey, you know, come and check out karate, this will be fun. So I went along, enjoyed it, and I fell in love with the sport instantly. Loved karate. And the karate training session went for two hours, which was quite grueling. And I remember going to the end of those sessions and I was exhausted because we used every part of our body. Using our mind, using our body, using our spirit. That's what they called it when you had to push through those barriers. They call it the wall in uh, long distance running. You'll hit that wall and then have to push through it. Same thing happens in karate. So I started training. And I trained for a couple of years. This started when I was 12 years old. I trained for a couple of years and I went to a seminar when I was 14 years old. And this seminar was called the Mind and You Seminar. And it was run by a man called Peter McMahon. And Peter McMahon taught me all about the mind, taught me about the power of the mind, taught me that the mind was incredible and capable of doing almost anything. He said, in fact, that whatever the mind can believe and conceive, it can achieve. And then he spoke about incredible feats that people have done, incredible things like um, a woman whose son was trapped under a car.